Hi, I'm Monsignor Jamie and welcome to Breaking Bread. On today's episode, I'll be preparing chicken quesadilla. And today we have an old guest with us, a, a good friend of mine, Arturo Castro, who's been with us before, and I want to welcome him back. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You can't keep me away no, from this. No, not at all. <laughs> uh, I'm a starving artist. That's Hopefully why. from the last time you, uh, you, you made a hit movie or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. We've <laughs> yeah, we'll been, talk about that. <laughs> I've had a little time, yeah. I've had a little time to think with that guacamole in my head. What are we doing today? We're doing well, today we're doing some uh, chicken quesadillas, and that's, uh, it's a very um, simple dish. Everything I make is simple. I always say that. But first, I have to get some chicken breast. I'm going to make it over Please. to the refrigerator. Well, I admire and smell some of these products. I love that he says that like it's all simple, but none of us could actually make it. Do you understand? <laughs> like I tried to do that guacamole by myself. <laughs> How did it come out? I haven't been allowed back into my house by my fiance. Oh sis, my god. So. It didn't work out that well. I guess I tried. I tried. I tried. I'm gonna have to come over and do some cooking. Please, please <laughs> save my save my future marriage. Uh, oh, that's great. So you got chicken. So breasts. I have some chicken breast here, it. and you always have to keep chicken uh, refrigerated because it's so important to do that. So um, here I have some uh, taco seasonings, and what I do is um, just gonna put this Lightly on top. Sprinkle it. Awesome. Lightly. Do you ever use something besides breast for, for tacos or quesadillas? Well, I like the, the white meat. Um, you could use, you know, if you want, or vegetables or cheese. Um, you can use anything. You want to yeah. use beef, pork, but traditionally uh, chicken. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put some olive oil mm -hmm. in this saute pan. Great. And I'm going to um, just brown the, actually cook the chickens, chicken breast through. Uh, about three or four minutes on each side. Okay. So uh, what I did here, I just sprinkled that. And here, it's this isn't a, a spicy, it's really not that spicy, because you don't want to kill all the other flavors, yeah. the taste, ingredients that you're going to be putting in here. Do and it's just to brown them and coat them. Do you find it happens sometimes that when you overdo uh, spice, like, not just spice, but something that's too spicy, then it just kind of like absorbs it. Oh, yeah. You're, not, you're not even tasting the food or the flavor. You're just kind of suffering through it's so it. <laughs> Exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So we're just going to heat this up here, and we're going to brown, you know, cook these on each side, and then take them off. And then what I'll do is I'm going to throw in some of my other ingredients here, some uh, bell peppers here. We have red, green, uh, yellow, and orange peppers. And orange, yes. yes. So we have our peppers there. I'm going to mix, saute them with some onions. Okay. And after that uh, sautés and cooks, so I'll take them off. And then we're going to get our quesadillas, and I'm going to brown them on each side, and then I'll pile them up. We'll fill them with the chicken. We'll uh, julienne the chicken, nice slices. Okay. Add the peppers and onions. And then, of course, I have a mixture here of some uh, cheeses here. I have some cheddar. I have yellow and white cheddar in there. Fantastic. Little, uh, Asiago I'm cheese. I'm a, like, Asiago? Yeah. I'm watering at the mouth, and <laughs> our audience is too, yeah? Afterwards, Sorry. we'll take it out. It's like the mother put a little, just a little um, a sour cream, a little salsa on top, and serve them. Great, so that's, uh, like as I'm preparing this, uh, why don't we get into what's going on with your acting career? <laughs> what's going on with my acting career? That's great. Um, so, yeah, so I'm on, the, on a television show. I'm a recurring character in a television show called Broad City on Comedy Central. Okay. And it's very fun. My character has a bit of an accent, so he always talks a little bit like this. You know, <laughs> like, oh my there's a chicken and you put it on this. And it just smells <laughs> like magic, you know? It's a comedy. So, it's a comedy, yeah, yeah right. for sure. It's a comedy. It's completely <laughs> ridiculous. I don't know if you would be into it, but yeah. like it's No, cool. I've watched it a couple of times. Oh, you like uh, it? So. Yeah, all right, great. Um, I, we have approval from our senior, <laughs> so, we, so we, we can do anything we want. I gotta give you a little plug in there. Yeah, yeah, a little <laughs> plug, yeah, great. And then I just came out with my own show on Comedy Central 2 called Alternatino. What Alternatino is, is a sketch show based on like what the best of both cultures is, right? I grew up in Guatemala up until I was 19 and I've been here for 10 years. And it just felt like the, what we laugh at is very similar in both cultures, you mm -hmm. see? So I see too many shows about what makes us different and not too many shows about what makes us the same. So I make sketches that I remember from my childhood and put them out to the universe and people have been responding really well to it. Actually, Sofia Vergara, saw one of my sketches and mm -hmm. she published it to like her seven million followers. Really? Which, yeah, Monsignor, I think it was her way of flirting with me. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> Sophia, loud and clear, I like you too. Um, <laughs> now what did your fiance say about that? I, 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 I like you as a person, <laughs> Sophia. But anyway, so one of our sketches actually is about growing up in a Latin household and what happens uh, in the household when you take the Lord's name in vain. So my character, it slips, and then the mother in the sketch calls all the tias, so all the aunts, right? And they administer a huge butt whooping. 
you know, and in the end we have the grandmother come in because she's a very permanent, you know. And she settles the whole dispute. She's, you know, she, <laughs> she actually has power, so it's like, you know, she kind of raises him to the, you know, he gets A punished. different level. Yeah, she raises it to a different level because in Guatemala, you know, we venerate the grandma and we venerate the mother. Sure. And the, respect. Yeah, respect, but it's like we take it to a fearful level. But so we just got picked up for another season, so we're very happy about that. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. That's and I'm great. doing the, I just shot a film with Mr. Ang Lee. Three time Academy Award winner, a war film called Billy Lynn's Long Halftime Walk, which I hope you'll enjoy. I had to go to boot camp and get really jacked for it. Okay. Of course, I've let it all go now. <laughs> Especially eating it in my guacamole. Experience, I've been eating the guacamole. <laughs> but I think it's going to be a fantastic film. It's a 3D film, it's a drama, and it's a new technology, which is going to be fantastic. So That's I great. So you're busy. I would say. Well, uh, never too busy to come hang uh, out with Monsignor, I would say. Uh, well, and the food has nothing to we, do with we it. We got to eat. And yeah, we got to break bread together. Yes, and that's sir. what, you know, breaking bread is all about. You know, sharing a meal together, sharing experience, sharing life, uh, you know, what's going on in our lives. And that's how people bond. That's how people connect. You know, there's a lot of similarities between our cultures. And, you know, it's great that you see that. And you try to bring that out in your, your acting and, you know, well, what shows. Yeah, what happened was that I was running into... All these Ivy League educated uh, Latin dudes, or Latin guys, at auditions for drug dealers, and so we'd be like, we, you know, we all, I went to Vassar, this guy went to Brown, and right. you know, we'd run into each other dressed in these like thugged out, you know, and whenever we'd see each other, we'd be like, oh, how's your mom, you know, and then suddenly the casting director would come and be like, orale este, what's up, echolo, ah, we vato in the head, okay, and then they leave, and I'm like, so cricket, tell me more about it, you know. <laughs> And so I you figured, bring it right back. Yeah. <laughs> what I figured is I wanted to create a show to like break some of these stereotypes. But one of the things we have most in common among our cultures is religion. You know, I come from a very religious background, yeah. and Guatemala is a very religious country. And I tried to. And you were a Catholic. I am a Catholic yeah. boy. Yeah, I'm a good Catholic boy. Complete Catholic guilt. <laughs> and you told me about your family. You had a large family, and everyone went to church. And we went to church. Yes, it was. You know, I find going to church to be a really calming experience for my spirit. So we had a, we had a great time back then. Well, so no. that background really uh, helped you in your work and helped yes, you. Yes, it's my moral Keeps compass. Keeps you focused. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, don't go away. We'll continue our chicken uh, quesadillas and uh, we'll be right back. See you in a few minutes. Welcome back to Breaking Bread. And on this episode, we're preparing some chicken quesadillas. And I'm here with my good friend, my actor friend, my director friend, my friend from Guatemala. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. All uh, those Toro things. Castro. Castro. Hey, wait a minute. So wait. let's uh, continue this dish. We just browned our chicken breast. We're going to take them off now. Oh, it smells awesome. It smells good, right? Oh, yeah. And wait until the end product. Comes oh, out. I, can't, I can't. I literally cannot wait. <laughs> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit more olive oil in here. Okay. And that's the same uh, pan that I. Uh, cook my chicken in so you have all the, the flavors flavor. from the chicken and also the taco seasoning that's on the, the chicken. Okay. So we're gonna put this in here. Now I'm gonna throw in some of my onions. And those are just, and you cut those Like a julienne, ones. right, julienne it. slice. Okay. Like the peppers. So got we'll it. put this here, put this on. We're gonna saute the onions. Now I have my julienne of peppers. As you can see, it's very colorful. Yeah. Like a fiesta. Yes. Here we are basically sauteing. And we'll let that settle a few minutes. And I'm just going to put a little salt here. And how, lo how long did you cook professionally for? I did that for about 10 years. I, right oh, wow. after high school, I went to the Culinary Institute. Okay. And then I worked for about 10 years in hotels and restaurants. I was at the Carlisle, the Intercontinental. I even worked at Gracie Mansion for a little short. Oh, wow. well, where is Gracie Mansion? Uh, right on the Upper East Side, like in the 80s and 90s. The, that's the mayor's house? The mayor's oh, house. I that, see, that, I that's see. where the mayor lives. Oh, I see. And at the time, it was Mayor Koch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going back. I'm showing my age. Wow. But I did that for about 10 years. It was interesting. I enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. But then, you know, I, I always thought, uh, of the priesthood. As a young kid, I went to church like you. I went to Catholic uh, uh, school, grammar school, and I was a, an altar server, and I was always involved in the church. I thought about priesthood, but you know, as a teenager, you say, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, I enjoyed myself. I dated, I traveled, I worked, I went to school, and uh, at 30, I decided, you know, something was still calling me. I was always back in the church, volunteering my time. I was a Eucharistic minister, I was a lector. You know, so I did all those things and um, involved in retreats. Yeah. And uh, people would say to me, 
Jamie, when are you becoming a priest? Why don't you become a priest? And finally I said, you know, at this third, I think the Lord was calling me. I entered the, the seminary and became a priest at 36. Okay. And I'm a priest 20 years now, and I love it. And you told me you studied philosophy as well. Yes, we studied philosophy before I went into study theology. Okay. And uh, so, you know, four years of college, and then after college, you have to go to four years of theology. Okay. And um, it's very interesting. And it's you always use interested it almost me. every day. It, it's almost, it, it always mm -hmm. interested me. I, you know, studying philosophy and theology, and you, you deal with a spiritual science, don't you? Not a spiritual science, but like, you know, you, you're you submerged in the, in the practice of thought and prayer. Right. And I think that just like builds a greater human being. And also, right, realizing that, you know, we are not the center of, our, yeah, exactly. of this world yeah. and our lives, that, you know, God, there is a greater being that created us and, and hopefully guides us. Yeah. You know, he's with us every day. and. We have to always remember that. I'll, so, tell you, I'll tell you a good miraculous moment. I was, I was, uh, I almost left New York in 2009. You know, after the economic crash. You know, getting work was hard. Oh, you know, know there was tough. not a lot of people. So I remember I was in a very ba bad living situation in Queens, and I really wanted to move out of it, Eric. But I couldn't. It was, I just couldn't. It, I was in a very small room. I was. Just, it was depressing. It was winter, and I thought, you know what? If this doesn't, I couldn't afford the deposit to move into a new place. I couldn't afford it. I just couldn't. And uh, I was straight out of school. And I remember I had done a commercial like a year before that. So it, was, it came down to the wire and I was like, I went to church and I was, had a moment of prayer and I was like, God, you need to help me out because like otherwise it's just gonna, just let me know if there's, and my phone starts ringing. And I, like, I mute my phone because I'm praying and I'm like, well, okay, so God, you need really, my phone keeps ringing and I'm like, God, please. Hold that thought, I'll be right back, you know, excuse me. So you leave step it in the I, I step out, like, to check my phone, who's calling me, and it was a voice message from the guy I did that commercial with a year ago. And so he called me, he's like, listen, uh, I want you to do three more commercials uh, for me, but I have to pay you on the day, I can't pay you, like, a month later. And it was exactly, ex the very exact amount that I needed for my deposit. It was, like, incredibly Would you miraculous. say that was a coincidence? No, of course not. Of God. Like, you, like, you would have to be too self-centered to think, Oh, I, I, I just got a lucky break. That's it's happened to me many, many times in my life where it's been my first film role, too. I remember, you know, they were just going to give me a small part, a one-liner, and my line was going to be, so, where is Paco? <laughs> and I was going to make this line famous. I was going to put my tray down. I was going to look them right in the eye, and I was going to be like, so, what is Paco, everybody, you know? <laughs> That's and, uh, true. I mean, you turn it over, let go, let God, and yeah. you got to put it in God's hands, and you know that old expression? Yeah. We plan and God laughs. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you make God laugh? So before we get into, I want to, you know, you give back a lot and you do it in your work. I try. So let's go to a commercial. Right. We'll come back. We'll finish up this chicken quesadilla and we'll talk about how you like to give and back. And then we'll eat it. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Fantastic. Save the best for last. <laughs> Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Breaking Bread, and we're preparing here a chicken quesadilla, and I'm here with my good friend, Arturo Castro. That's my celebration dance. Are you hungry? My name. Oh, very much so. Okay. Yeah. Well, by the way, any relation to Castro? Well, you the know, family, uh, I will probably find out once he passes if, if I inherit an island, and yes, of course, <laughs> if the CIA is listening, then no, I have never heard of this man before. I have no relation. This this Fidel tattoo that I have is completely unrelated. Yeah. Uh, no, but, no relation. Okay. Yeah, no relation. Okay, let's uh, continue here. We what I did was I sautéed my peppers and onions here. I took them out and put them in a bowl. Great. Right now I have my uh, uh, grill here. Tortilla is here, and they're on this grill because they cook evenly. It's better than in a frying pan. I see. So here we're going to do. Is I have sliced up the chicken, mm -hmm. and as this is cooking, you put it on a low flame. You don't want to cook it too much. I put a little butter on the bottom. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is put some chicken. And we're gonna While it's heating up in the bottom? Yeah. Well, because it's making it nice and soft. Right. Is that what it's doing? So just face them out. Now here I have a whole wheat and I have a uh, flour. Do, now do you want the end effect to be crispy or fluffy? Or, or like soft? Well, you, no, not too crispy. It's not going to be crunchy like a taco. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be like nice and like just warm and like fluffy and foldable right. and malleable. Got it. <laughs> it's insane. You don't know what I'm saying, guys. Like, I wish it was, there was like a smelling part of the television, but it smells like dreams. What dreams are made of, really, guys? You know, when you score that goal, that's what it smells like. <laughs> Let's put another piece of chicken right there. Fantastic. So the tortillas are on here, mm -hmm. and you can see they're fluffing up a little. Now you put some 
the uh, onions, some of the onions and peppers. And you don't want to go too far to the to the edges. Just We're going to save that. You don't want that to come out. We're going to save that for the cheese. I see. The edges for the cheese. Right. That's a good so. motto to have. The edges for the cheese. <laughs> the <laughs> that, edges. that cheese is living on the edge. You can put that into a song. Yes, yes, yes. The edges on the cheese. The edges on the cheese. That's all I know how to sing, bud. There oh, you sing also, huh? No, that was okay. the first time I've ever sung, but it went really well, so we're right. retired. Now here we have our cheese. So once again, we're gonna, like I say, some in the middle, of course. And then the edges on the, for the cheese, okay. Just let's point out that I suck as an assistant, that all I can do is like moral support. I'm like, Monsignor, you're doing great. You know? yeah. Oh, so I see you're putting it on the edge as well. Right. <laughs> okay. Great. That looks fantastic. Now we're going to put a top on. Oh, I see. Pat I see down. what you're doing here. Mm -hmm. Like that. Wow. The cheese is starting to melt already. Uh -huh. Everything is cooked already, so you just want to melt that cheese. And then we'll uh, flip it now. You make sure when you get your spatula, you put it all the way in. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to all come out. So you get right there. Okay. And then you're going to quickly flip it over. Got it. One, two, three. One, two. Oh, uh, oh, there it is. Cheated there a little bit. Oh, it's all right. Yeah. Okay. We we'll get this one right here. And one, one two, two, three. One, two. Oh. All right. There's always one rebellious that, piece of chicken. <laughs> so it's like sees an opening and goes, "What? Well, freedom!" Put <laughs> that under there. Here we have the uh, the whole wheat and the uh, flour uh, tortilla. I see. So now you let that cook a little bit. We let that cheese melt a little bit, and then we're gonna just cut them into quarters, little okay. triangles. You know, if you're serving it to one person on a dish, you would put it on a dish and you would cut it. But if you're serving it as an appetizer with a, at a party or something, you yeah, cut so it in slices. Can I, may I ask you something? How many times in the cooking career does one cut oneself? Like a um, bunch? A, few, a fair amount? A lot. <laughs> Especially in the at the beginning. In the beginning. Then you get a, a taste for it. When you're a rookie, uh, you know, you're, <laughs> you're an apprentice, yeah, you yeah, cut yeah, a lot. Yeah. I think it's, it's in, in acting, too. When you make yeah. a few mistakes, you do a lot more takes, but then... I, I, yeah, I used to cut myself in acting, too. It was weird. <laughs> That's actually true, though. <laughs> How you, know, you do that? I did it. I did it. It was the stupidest thing. I was in my, one of my first scenes in college, and there was a scene where I had to cut bread. So I like slice it, and I sliced right into my finger, and I re remember I grabbed a loaf of bread, and I just kept going with the scene. <laughs> I'm like, you know, and they're like, "Why are you clenching your teeth?" And I'm like, "I will not." I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding. I will not stop this scene. <laughs> you know, and finally had to stop, and it was like the whole, it was a, a whole mess. But yes, I see apprentices do cut themselves. No, I guess that do. that's the the moral of the story. Now, <laughs> let's talk about the moral of the story. Yes. You like to give back. Yes. How do you give back in your acting career? Well, I use. You know, the pl uh, what exposure gives you is a platform, right? Mm -hmm. I've always believed this. I've always known the people. You know, it's hard to change the world when you're not in a position of power. And what a platform gives you is exposure and a little bit of power, a, a bit of a megaphone for people to listen to. So one of the things I do is drama therapy. Drama therapy is you go into inner city schools and you go into ALCs, which are suspension centers, and you teach kids how to deal with their emotions through acting. Right? Okay. So you put up a scene and you make a scene, you make a mistake in the scene, a moral mistake. You like, you steal, you steal the product or you beat up the guy or whatever it is. And then you process the scene and you, you ask them, what do you think went wrong in the scene? How could it have gone better? And then you ask them to come up, you know, you come up with some solutions. They come up with you and then you make the right decision. And then they see how much better it feels and at least the hope is that once you've done it once and it's felt good, that when it comes up in real life, you at least know what the right decision feels like. So we do it. We do that, and also I'm doing. I'm directing. A, I'm helping these kids direct a play at a homeless center. It's a center for homeless for homeless kids. So we're coming in with my writing partner. We're helping them write a play, and then we're putting it up professionally. And I just love. You know, it's like they've given me such la like such language and such generosity that like to me I would for the rest of my life for the rest of my career forever. Would, I'm going to leave this world in a better way than which I found it. That's life great. is so transient. So they're really they're able to work out their own personal struggles in life. Yeah. Through their acting. Yeah. Dropout dropout rates drop, you know, markedly. You know, once you give somebody hope, the power of hope is one of the most important ones in, in the world, to my opinion. Mm -hmm. And so once you give somebody like the, the light at the end, edge of the tunnel, and you real, they realize that they have talent. And you know, it, it just really sparks something nice in them. So I hope to bring that for the rest of my life, really. Well, that's beautiful. That's really, it's nice to see how you can incorporate your work with helping people. 
giving it's a back. And yeah. that, I mean, that's true in every profession. Sure. There's always some way where it's not just a vocation, it's not just a job, it's not just about becoming successful and making money, it's about how you can use your skills and talents yeah. to make this world a better place. These talents are not our own, do you mm -hmm. know? They're, you have to recycle your good fortune, because otherwise, what are you going to do? Hoard it, mm -hmm. and then you're going to just die a successful man, and what, what did you do in this life, you know? You got to, and by the way, we're giving this inspirational speech, but like, it's so distracting because this smells so delicious. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like you know, you have to be generous. And then I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to share this with anybody. <laughs> like even my senior, I'm like, hey, um, senior, uh, you, don't, you don't have to eat all that, right? <laughs> but yeah, it's been great having this experience of being here today. And also like, to me, it's, it's important to keep my moral compass intact. And that's my religion, where I grew that up. That all comes back from your, your, upbringing. your foundation. Yeah. You know, where you came from what you grew up with, the morals and values you learned through your faith. Yeah, and, and I'm a deeply flawed human being, deeply. But my heart is good. And I, and I would hope that anybody that wants to follow this career path knows that like, you're gonna disappoint yourself every now and then, right? But you just have to understand that there's always second chances and that as long as you keep a through line of yeah. trying to help and trying to do the right thing, there's always going to be a platform for you to use, you know? So don't be too hard. As long as you understand your own humanity. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, yeah, yeah. getting back to what we said before, you know, when you make yourself God, you feel, you know, you, you're, you're right in everything. You can do everything right. No, no. We, can, we make mistakes. There's only one God. Yeah. And when we stumble and fall, God gives us the grace to get up again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so go on. Yeah, exactly. So. And prepare this, yes. Are you hungry? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is my celebration dance, by the way. So now this. <laughs> you want to do a little tap dance? Yeah, too? sure. <laughs> I've just learned today. Today I've learned how to sing and dance, and yeah, I don't know about. Um, so let's try the whole wheat first because we're on a macro diet. Well, right we are exactly. You want to be healthy. Let uh, me yeah. get you a, a little napkin right yeah, here. Yeah, before I look like a slob in front of like national television. I'm like, whoa. Well, uh, Here's a little thank dish you, right thank here. You. Nice and colorful. Colorful, for the season. right? Um, and just grab, just let me, go ahead let and me grab. help you. Fantastic. All right. Okay. I think I mean, I'll go healthy also. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's healthy. So as up. you can see, the cheese is all melting out. And, uh, bueno, so. Buen apetito, huh? Oh, wow. Well. Mm. Mm. It's so good. I'm sorry. It's like melty and crunchy and, I don't know, it's like that moment when you wake up and the sunrise is just right. That's but right. inside your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> now, That's of course, you can top this with some sour cream, some salsa, mm -hmm. some guacamole, and just put a little dab on top, and... Um, you got a delicious dish. Well, thank you so much, Monsignor. This is fantastic. Mm. It's basically healthy. I mean, it's fresh vegetables, chicken, mm -hmm. and if you can go with the whole wheat, tortilla. And you went to you're the all set. I, I, I have a problem. I, I must try the other one. <laughs> Enjoy. I don't know about this Thank you so much, Monsignor. Enjoy. This has been a pleasure. I want to thank you for being with us here again a second time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your life is very interesting. It, it's, it's nice to see someone uh, coming to this country yeah. and really contributing and giving to this country, making a, a new life for yourself, but also giving back and help to make this country great. That's what all the immigrants did. Our parents came, our grandparents came. That's what this country is all about. Yeah. And as long as we have people like you who are willing to help us in this country, to build this country, make it stronger, give the opportunity to all the immigrants and help people to believe in themselves and give back, I think we're in good shape. Thank you so much. It's you an are, inspiration. You are an inspiration no, to sir. all of us. But thank, thank you so you, much. Arturo. Thank you so much. so much. And I'll come back anytime, guys. And let me know thank when you your guys. show is on. I mean, for sure. For you need sure. a priest. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely what I need. That's the one thing I need for my comedy show, The Priest. Well, I'm going to go eat this off by okay, myself. Great. But thank you so thank much, you. guys. Be well. Well, I hope you enjoyed our show today, and uh, make sure you tune in for the next episode of Breaking Bread. And uh, if you'd like to try this recipe at home, here it is.